I think we, you know, Hall and Oates, Hall and Oates. Big, big deal to us. So yeah, that's, that's what we did. We did, it was basically the same thing. And we, we ended up coming to Los Angeles together and uh, working with a producer, Paul Jackson Jr., who's pretty well known in jazz circles, but he was also, since he was a teenager playing on, you know, Chicago records and he's a guitarist and he played on Chicago Chicago. and Michael Jackson, like, you know, he's just one of one of the, one of the cats that was known for his musicianship. He was amazing. Uh, And he had a home studio. And so we'd go there and record, record these demos and stuff. So we did some showcases and, and, and stuff and it got pretty close, but we didn't really, we didn't get the deal with that venture, but it was sort of. got offered a deal. We did. Yeah. And a publishing deal too. So it went, it went okay. I mean, I ended up starting to do touring bands. So I I was touring with Donny Osmond when Donny Osmond had his resurgence where he came back with Soldier of Love and, and I joined that tour. And then later I, I toured with Roger Daltrey as a musician. So that's not my favorite thing to do. It just never has been, but, uh, but I ended up doing it and it was a good experience. But ever since then, it's just been film and TV and, and movie marketing, been doing custom work for that wrote a song for um jennifer nettles from sugarland and she she performed it on the cma country christmas special and stuff like that and that's kind of pisses me off because i was actually <laughs> writing in nashville trying to get cuts and mark comes along and gets a cut in nashville from here <laughs> right. in the market right. i was working in uh it's really it's hilarious yeah no doubt <laughs> So uh, since I'm already talking about everything post the movie, I guess I'll round back to the movie in here in a moment. Can we spend just a moment to catch up with a couple of the other band members who aren't with us? I was just wondering if I could ask you what Greg Bond, Patrick Burns have been up to here recently. Fortuitous timing, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. Well, Greg, I believe, is working with in the church. I think he does a lot of work in the church as a singer. And also I think he works, works in sound and stuff. So I don't know what church... I haven't really been in touch with with Greg until just recently, just the just in the last week or so. So yeah, I, I think oh, you'd wow. have to check in with Crazy. him. Crazy, yeah. It always seemed like that was a place that he was very happy. Um, so mm-hmm. we were happy to hear that he was happily involved in the church, that he's still doing stuff musically. I think mm-hmm. we had heard that Patrick Byrne was working on a uh, Christian music project, Christian yeah. music project of some sort. He's working on a gospel album. Oh, okay. Jeff and I are doing a musical, but it's not a Christian musical. <laughs> no, no, it's not. So I think you might have mentioned that. Can you tell us a little bit about a musical that you guys are working on? I, I'm actually was working on it when you I got the invite. I can prove it because I've got a piano right in front of me. Uh-huh. Well, Mark's been pretty active doing custom works for trailers and composition in TV. And uh, during the pandemic, I was watching some things and I got this idea and so i went to mark and i said i have this i said i really think we should pitch a television show he goes i think that's great because I'm, i've got connections and i'm doing some of that stuff he's he was working on he's still working on a christmas movie so what, we just developed my idea uh, and the it's tentatively called vessel and it's about a singer songwriter who is relatively mentally touched but he it turns out that he's getting messages from beyond from the ancestors trying to give us messages of how we can say where the world's going right now and cool, he has cool, this yeah. huge following of homeless who follow him and they see him as this as a messiah and uh we actually got that pretty far down the road but we were told by a showrunner a very good friend of mine and and now mark's he said, I'm just telling you, my brother, his brother is a showrunner for The Sopranos and has done a bunch of stuff, has a brand new show coming out on Apple TV. He said that what you're doing is not going to be picked up by anybody in the industry because it's coming from middle-aged white men. <laughs> and, and he's right. I, I, know he's, I know what he's saying is true. So I have a Puerto Rican friend of mine who's a writer who now has the project and is trying to develop it for us. I'm a fan of, of the musical genre, more things like Hamilton and things that are more current. And I've several times said to Mark, I'd like to do a musical. And Mark's always open. It's the great thing about Mark. He'll look at me. Yeah. Remember when I said it, he looked at me and he went, you want to do a musical? I'm like, yeah, I want to do a musical. So I'm now taking the vessel idea and, and putting it together to be a stage production. Oh, cool. So that's that's cool. Cool. Yeah. We would be super interested in that for sure. You know? Well, you know, to be honest with you, Broadway is is really a mess right now. And the chance of it ever getting that far is, is remote. But I, for me, it's about, I want to get it done, have Mark clean it up and then see if maybe I can get it done locally. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. but on topic, 
Mark yeah. has several times said, you know, Voyage of the Rock Aliens would be a great musical. <laughs> it was. It would be a great musical. It he has said it to me right. several times that that right. would be a yeah. great musical. It so, and then make it like an on ice number, right? Maybe roller skates, maybe on roller skates. <laughs> yeah. So we, we noticed uh, a Rima scan computer right in the beginning of the movie. And we <laughs> talked to Mark about this and the story behind it was really fun. Could you guys tell us a little bit about how that Rima scan computer came into being? It was just a thing where I think at that time we were down the road a little ways in terms of shooting and we had made friends with those prop guys and, and uh, set designers and stuff. And so I think we just mentioned that, you know, hey, it'd be cool if we had some stuff in the ship that kind of pointed to our band or, or you know, kind of Easter egg things. And yeah. that was one thing yeah. well, I said, well, what if we called it the Rima scan or something like that? And one of the guys says, yeah, let's do it. And he did it. And I was kind of nervous, you know, because I thought maybe James Fargo would be like, hey, we can't, you know. And he, again, you know, he just, he let it roll and it was really cool. Yeah. So just nice people on the set. Yeah. I felt like there was a lot of Rama flavor there in the ship. It, it was just living and breathing Rama. Right. Right. <laughs> um, you know, one of our favorite things was the little dolls from the beginning of the movie. Like we wish oh, right. we knew where those little dolls <laughs> went. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> your first time watching it and the robot tells you that he's going to reanimate the aliens you know and then he goes to a freezer and he pulls out a six pack of little toy dolls to reanimate the <laughs> it's not right. what you're expecting and they go no down that much. tube so smoothly it doesn't look fake at all yeah <laughs> right yeah yeah when we saw yeah. that when we were on the set and we saw those yeah. tubes we were like they're not even straight like they bend a little bit and no. they're like bumpy <laughs> and i was just like what are they going to do? You know, this is like, and then I thought, well, okay, well then maybe they'll do some really good sound, you know? So it'll sound like it's like shooting through there through some hydraulics and no, it's like squeaking and cl clonking along like little plastic. <laughs> It's, right. I think they oh went, my God. they went cheesy, which, which I th actually think was kind of cool. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially like when uh, Tom Nolan like explodes and you guys reassemble him by turning him into paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then inflating it, it's it's great. It's really great. And you know what? Just like in an actual good production and on a good film with a lot of budget, yes, the writers were standing there changing the script as we were as it was filming and I'm thinking, my god, that boy you guys are taking this real serious. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It actually, you know, and, and learning about all the different pieces that have been moved around and everything, it actually comes out as such a coherent product if you aren't aware of that. I'm sure if you're making the movie and you're like, man, they took this piece and they threw it over here, you know, because the beginning of the movie was supposed to be the end. They took off what was the end song to the movie that right before the Jermaine Jackson piece, which was going to be on the end. And they used that as like a fantasy of absence in the middle. But yep. it all just comes together really for a coherent project, you know. Quite so honestly, I think only on a podcast would anyone call that movie coherent. But I'm gonna let, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a mulligan on that. Oh, okay, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, what yep. were your guys' favorite scenes in the movie? Uh, mine, mine were with Allison LaPlaca and Michael Berryman in the, when they were trying to fix his chainsaw. I think those were the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> those are they my were, favorite yeah because you could tell number one they were really seasoned actors who knew what they were doing and they pulled off that script and made it almost enjoyable to watch that scene yeah it was really right. fun yeah. yeah i'll give you an allison laplaca story so there's the scene where we come in on the tractor mm -hmm. and we get off the tractor and she invites us to come play at the cotillion but when mm -hmm. when we first get off we all start grabbing her you notice we're grabbing her and we totally ad lib that that was just on the spot i think one of us reached and touched her and then we all just sort of went for her <laughs> and my understanding was she was not happy about it is that true mark i don't know I but understand. i i got the impression that it was really freaking her out <laughs> Because we were just like grabbing everything in her tool belt and pieces of her hair and smelling it and stuff and it was just it was a bit much it was unexpected. She didn't expect it. Genuine reaction. <laughs> Again, it comes yeah. off so alien. And the genuine reaction from her is really good, as you can see her just force herself through like, that uh... scene. <laughs> yeah. You know? What was your least favorite thing in the movie to shoot? Oh, the least favorite to shoot? Yeah. Was, was, was the freezing night on the bridge when we were stealing the clothes from the couple, the double date that was parked and uh, wanting to make out. Mm -hmm. And then we... We were out there and, right. and used some magic and voodoo or whatever and got our guts, took their clothes. 
but it was only hard because it was it was freezing it was just unbelievably cold and it was late like wee hours of the morning or something what about you jeff or something like that um that was the least favorite to film for sure that was you have a least favorite scene in the movie overall as far as like a scene that you don't care for in the movie Anything so the beginning, the middle, and the end, or you want to? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, I'm completely baffled by what a huge following very bad B movies have, and how this one has is now and then the canons of bad movies. I, I it's, I, it's hard to even so it, imagine good. it. Yes, it's so bad that it's good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're looking for like a campy bad movie night and you really enjoy that camp and you start in on this movie, it's, it's just, a fun movie to watch at groups, right? It just delivers and it delivers and it delivers. And that's before you get to, you know, Craig Sheffer half naked as he's <laughs> rolling around what yeah. looks like the Dishman Hills with, with a cougar. Right. <laughs> Shredding his stuff with a cougar. Right. Yeah. That was my nephew's big comment. Like, watching the scene with Craig Shepard going through the, the school, and he's like, that's not safe. He shouldn't be there. That's not safe. <laughs> is that his voice? Is that no. his voice? Is he singing that uh, song? I looked it up. Uh, the singer's name is Michael Bradley. Right. Correct. Yeah. And uh, he's lip syncing. Um, and then for the ending scene, he's lip syncing to Jermaine Jackson. Yeah, yeah. you mean Tom, Tom Nolan? Yeah, and that's a shame because uh, Tom no. Nolan actually can sing. Oh no, well, he yeah. is. Craig singing Jermaine Jackson at the end. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, Craig is. Um, I don't know if anybody um dubbed over Tom. Did they? Oh, Tom Nolan was dubbed over. Tom okay. Nolan can sure. sing, but he was dubbed over the entire time. I can't remember exactly who the singer that they had yeah. play him. This. I don't know if you guys realized how many musical artists are in this movie. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. I believe there's four different bands. I thought Open Hearted was by Rayma uh, at first. Yeah, I, I was. I almost at the beginning of this said, I just want to make it clear that Open Hearted is not Rayma. It was a band. That actually, <laughs> they were signed at the same time we were signed to MCA, but they actually had a radio hit. We've actually talked about how fun it would be to hear an Open Hearted Rayma cover. Yeah, cover. You might. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thought fun. of that. Not right. a bad idea. Because I think that is probably a big, big part of the reason they went with the band uh, Real Life. Yeah, Real right? Life. Yeah, yeah, Real Life. They sounded so much like you guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, they were signed to Curb Records right. like like we were. So that was part of it. And they, they had a good hit. I mean, they're, they're, I like their stuff. Yeah, lot. Calling All yeah. Angels. Yeah, Calling All Angels. With us, I think, oh, wait. I think with them, they were going to, they were going to work. Was that what it was called? Send Me an Angel. Send me, send me an Angel. Oh, send Me an Angel. So with Curb, they, Curb was going to work them at radio, and, and our shot was doing the movie. That's how they were going to break us. Definitely. Yeah. All righty. Um, so I think we've talked a little bit about what you guys are up to currently. Jeff, you're currently working on a musical? Yeah, I, I still occasionally write country music. Um, oh. And Mark collaborates on some of that. Mark and I regularly write together, and we we've, we always are planning the next Rayma thing, but other things get in the way but that right now i'm working on the musical specifically all right i'll have to send you a message i'd love to have a link to one or two of your country songs if you'd be happy to share them uh, absolutely sure yeah yeah that'd be awesome i'm uh i mean i'm pretty specifically a johnny cash fan you know <laughs> oh uh, that's hard songs. that's hardcore country that's that yeah. old school like the yeah. vital black days right very <laughs> yeah. very old school good that's stuff. awesome and then you guys still collaborating as rama which is just great to hear and then Mark, you're doing some work on your own as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, you were you were mentioning projects. you were mentioning one of the I, I had this project that I started in two thousand, which was called My Rich Friends. And that was just just all me. And it was just I think the one of the tracks that you were mentioning is uh called Am I Dante? Yeah, yeah. Am I Dante. Yeah, which was inspired actually by by the the TV show that Jeff conceptualized. And so that's kind oh. of what where oh, that came cool. from yeah, so yeah. and that's um, by the way yeah. the next song i want to put in the musical mark so if you could get me the get me the stems <laughs> and that's the next that. song i want to go to i also wanted to point out something yeah. about the movie that i don't know if you noticed but one of the most famous people in the movie you never see and that is the voice of the robot which is peter cullen and yeah i yeah. just found that out last night peter cullen is optimus his, prime optimus yeah, prime optimus prime and optimus his, prime yeah, yeah, and that was yeah, that was pretty yeah. early. I think pretty early in his career, so it was kind of kind of cool to have that. Yeah, yeah, it's part of it. Let's not go and cue up Emma Dante. Like a crack in the cosmos that keeps haunting me.